Welcome to Socio Today. Our today's lecture is Social Science and Common Sense. When we do not know where our ideas come from or what they are based on, we sometimes call the common sense. If we call them common sense, we do not have to prove they are true, for then others will join us in the collective self-deception of assuming they have already been proved. If one presses for proof, one is told that idea has been proved by experience. The term common sense puts a respectable front on all sorts of ideas for which there is no systematic body of evidence can be cited. What often passes for common sense consists of a group's accumulation of collective guesses, hunches, and hazards trial and error learning. Many common sense propositions are sound, earthy, useful bit of knowledge. A soft answer turns away wrath and birds of a feather flock together or practical observations on social life. But many common sense conclusions are based on ignorance, prejudice and mistaken interpretation. When medieval European noticed that feverish patients were free of lies while most healthy people were lousy, they made the common sense conclusion that lies would cure fever and therefore sprinkled lies over feverish patients. Common sense thus preserves both folk wisdom and folk nonsense and to sort out one from the other is a task for science. Only within the past two or three hundred years has the scientific method become a common way of seeking answers about the natural world. Science has become a source of knowledge about our social world even more recently, yet in the brief period since we began to use the scientific method, we have learned more about our world than had been learned in the preceding 10,000 years. The spectacular explosion of knowledge in the modern world parallels our use of scientific method. How does this scientific method operate? We will discuss it in our next lecture. Thank you very much.